What's going on guys? Welcome back to the UTSA Dynasty. I know you guys are ready and are excited to see UTSA play in their first ever bowl game against Florida State in the Armed Forces Bowl. But first I wanted to recap Season 3 in the UTSA Dynasty as well as preview the Armed Forces Bowl against Florida State. First, I want to look at the schedule and the stats for UTSA and show you guys the road UTSA had to take in order to get this far and to reach the 8-4 record they did and to accomplish a lot of the goals set forth in this series. It all started in Week 1 when UTSA took on the Colorado Buffaloes in the Fred Arnold rivalry. They started off the game down by 20 points, but freshman quarterback Evan Newton in his first career start brought them back from 20 points down with 21 unanswered points and 3 passing touchdowns on their way to one of the biggest wins in team history, 21-20. In the following game against Houston, UTSA ran into a bit of a roadblock. Houston was one of the best teams this year and finished number 6 in the nation and also had their quarterback as a Heisman Trophy winner, David Pyland. After the 1-1 one -one start, UTSA won back-to-back -back games against Louisiana Tech and UMass, but against the Minutemen, Evan Newton got injured and had to be replaced by John Simmons. Following the bye week, John Simmons was still the starter with Evan Newton injured. He won his two starts against Rice and UTEP, and suddenly, UTSA had their best start in team history and was one win away from becoming bowl eligible. They were 5-1 at the midpoint of the season, and then Evan Newton was scheduled to come back. UTSA decided to go with a two-quarterback system over the next three games, which ultimately was an experiment that failed. They lost to UCF, Southern Mississippi, and then a shootout against Tulsa, and following that game, UTSA knew they needed to make a change at the quarterback position. Evan Newton assumed the role as a starting quarterback again and led UTSA to a victory against Marshall, which ensured them that they would be a bowl-eligible team, and they had their sixth win on the year. After their final bye week, they played Tulane in the game. They got out to a sloppy start in, but eventually regrouped and knocked off the Green Wave for their seventh win on the year. And then, it was time to get revenge against Texas State. Texas State beat them badly last year at the Alamo Dome, and UTSA gave them the same treatment at their own home stadium, and UTSA got their eighth win of the year. They were 8-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in conference, and that led them to where we are now. In the Armed Forces Bowl, they will play the Florida State Seminoles, a team from the ACC, UTSA's biggest challenge yet as a growing program. Final Conference USA standings look like this. UTSA only finishes 7th in the conference, but it was a very good year for the Conference USA, including two teams that had double-digit victories. UTSA finished 5th overall in their own division, behind Southern Mississippi, Eastern Carolina, Central Florida, and Marshall. Final Top 25 rankings for the BCS look like this. Notre Dame and Texas are your number one and number two teams in the nation, and there is also Houston and Southern Mississippi as the representatives from the Conference USA. UCF would have been there as well, but they struggled down the stretch and finished 9-3. and three. As we already know, this year's Heisman Trophy winner is David Pyland, who had a fantastic year for the Houston Cougars. He won this year's Heisman, Maxwell, Walter Camp, and O'Brien Awards with a 54-touchdown passing season, 5,545 yards on Houston's one-loss campaign. Here are your All-Americans for this season. There's a little bit to be excited about for UTSA fans. There are no first-team All-Americans for this team, but there is one second-team All-American with senior safety Nick Johnson and the great year that he had. And also, as a freshman All-American, no, it's not going to be Evan Newton. It's not going to be Dominic Carter. But there is returner Danny Moss actually is an All-American. After this year, he finished with these numbers. He only had a 11 kick returns, but he did the most that he could with them. 365 yards and one 108-yard touchdown. Danny Moss is a freshman All-American going into next year. And here are the final stats for all of UTSA's players this season. Freshman quarterback Evan Newton leads the way in passing with 13 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Not dazzling numbers, but we saw his ability as a playmaker, and he definitely was a big part in UTSA's eight-win season. At running back, UTSA had a two-back system with David Glasgow in the under-center formations and Anthony Banks out of the shotgun formations. Both played pretty well, but nobody really stood out as a breakout back this year for UTSA. 
At the end of the year, we saw Cam Jones turn it on big time when he had six touchdown catches to finish the year. And we also saw the emergence of freshman receivers, Randy Jones and Tim Whitaker. I'm really excited to watch them play next year. But also Kenny Harrison and David Morgan had a big role this year. And Brandon Freeman did well, but he was hurt towards the end of the season. On defense, there is your second team All-American, Nick Johnson, leading the team with 83 tackles. And he had four interceptions. Dominic Carter, he had two and a half sacks with 69 tackles in there as well, and he had one interception. There was a lot of standouts this year for UTSA's defense, including sophomore cornerback Kyle Nichols, who started the year off hot, and he had five interceptions total. He could be a future star for UTSA. Darian Starling, John Walker, Cody Rogers, these guys all had big roles in the defense, and UTSA's defense really came together this year. But it'll be interesting to see what they do next year when a lot of these big pieces are gone. Sean Iano finishes the year with only 18 field goal attempts, but he knocked home 16 of them. Here is a look at Florida State's schedule this season. It was a down year by their own standards, but they're still a very good team and are heavily favored against UTSA. It's not going to be easy for the Roadrunners to win their first ever bowl game, but nothing has come easy for this team. They've earned the right to be in the Armed Forces Bowl, and now they have the opportunity to raise a trophy and finish the year the right way. We hope UTSA can knock out Florida State in the bowl game, but we'll find out in the next episode. I likely will get that video out on Friday, so be on the lookout for the Armed Forces Bowl. Thank you guys for watching and sticking with this series, this three-year stretch. The UTSA is finally a winning team. Hopefully it's been worth the ride. Thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you in the Armed Forces Bowl.